today, I want to talk about an unreleased sequel to one of the most top-grossing games in the SNES library. That game was Star Fox 2. But why didn't it come out? To get to the bottom of this, let's start from the beginning. Early in the Super Nintendo's lifespan, Nintendo wanted to make a game that would fully display the system's Super FX chip. The Super FX was a coprocessor built to work alongside the SNES's hardware. The chip's main purpose was to render 3D polygon graphics, the first of its kind available commercially. The reason this was so important to Nintendo was because their biggest rival, the Sega Genesis, was not capable of the processing power the chip had. Up until this point, every game that utilized the Super FX was considered a novelty at best. Nintendo wanted a blockbuster. But who could carry such a task? Nintendo turned to none other than Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of such greats as Mario, Zelda, and Donkey Kong. With Nintendo's top dog on board, Star Fox was born. This game had it all. Groundbreaking graphics, amazing gameplay. It was only natural that a sequel would be in the works. And in 1995, that's exactly what Nintendo planned to do when they announced Star Fox 2, set to be released summer of that year. The game picked up right where the first left off, with Fox McCloud and his crew continuing the fight against the evil Emperor Andros and his legions, forefronted by the Star Wolf Brigade. The game sported a more advanced 3D game engine and vastly improved gameplay all issues and desires voiced by the players of the first game were addressed in this sequel, and more. Unlike the first game, which followed a linear storyline, this one allowed the player to make moves and pick paths to their liking. Not to mention this game let you play as more pilots than just Fox. The game also evolved from just a rail shooter. In certain missions, you can press select and convert your R-Wing into a mechanized bipedal walking tank. But where I feel this game really shines is in its mission select menu. This screen acts as a mini game that plays somewhat like a tower defense. Andros is in full attack mode and is sending his entire fleet towards Corneria. It's your mission to not only move forward and attack Andros, but also to intercept any missiles and ships he sends to Corneria. When Corneria takes battle damage, a percentage is accumulated. Let Corneria take enough damage and it's game over adding a whole new dynamic to the gameplay. The game was fully completed in spring of 1995 and was set for its summer release. But as its release date drew near, Nintendo thought it would be best if they scrapped the title and focus on their new console, the Nintendo 64, set to be released the following year. The game never saw the light of day, but it was fully completed and a beta version had already existed. It was only a matter of time before the beta was found and released on the web. Today you can find a fully working ROM of the game compatible with various emulation devices. Also, if the game is ripped onto a cartridge, it works on the original Super Nintendo hardware. There are a few rare cartridges out in circulation. The game is pretty short. I was able to beat it in about a half hour, but there was plenty of variables making the replay value very high. Although the game was never released, it was very important to Nintendo's success in the 64-bit generation. Camera programs used in the game's development were adapted and reused to help create Mario 64, as well as 30% of the game being used to create the highly acclaimed Star Fox 64. Nintendo was asked if the game would ever be released for the Wii Virtual Console, and their response was probably not. Fortunately for us, there are plenty of ways for us to enjoy Star Fox 2. Until next time, this is Ness, signing off.